Okay, hi my friends. I would wish to take you through KCSE 2017 Computer Studies Paper 1, Question 16. Remember, we have done 2018 and 2019. They are on the playlist. You can search for them above there. And therefore, uh, 2017 Question 16 read as follows. Remember, instructions for Section B uh, are always that answer question 16 and any other three but we are interested in question 16 and question 16 is compulsory therefore state two qualities of a good pseudocode uh, we shall not actually state two but state many therefore uh, these are the answers expected that um, uh, that is a good pseudocode uh, should have state uh, okay their statements must be short clear and readable that is the statements must be short clear and readable number two the statement must not have more than one meaning we say they should be unambiguous or not be ambiguous ambiguous is a statement with two meanings or it is not actually clear. Then number three, the pseudocode lines should be clearly outlined or indented. Uh, we, actually, we actually use the word indented. A pseudocode must have a begin and an end. Rather, it must have start and stop. That is, a pseudocode should show clearly the start and stop for executable statements and the control structures. Number five, the input, output, and processing statements should be clearly stated using keywords such as print, read, input. You can also add output in capital letters. Yeah. Therefore, those are the some of the answers. You would have chosen two out of that. Then that is a part, part, question 16, part A. Then we have with the aid of a fruit flowchart diagram or diagrams describe each of the following program control structures and um, there is a video I have done on practical a uh, bit of co uh, program control structures just check the description below this video you can be in a position to look at the various uh, program control structures for easy understanding Therefore, with, uh, with the aid of flowchart diagrams, describe each of the following program control structures. Sequence, we have the remarks. Then uh, uh, we have selection. Uh, therefore, we have selection and uh, sequence. And therefore, that is in Form 3, uh, you opt to have run about the elementary programming. And therefore, you have sequence, you have selection, and you have routing. Therefore, sequence control structure, uh, the computer reads instructions from a program file line by line, starting from the first line sequentially towards to the end of the file. This is also called sequential program execution. Therefore, sequence, therefore the diagram is this one. We have start, then the computer reads statement one, then it reads statement two, it leads all the way up to statement n. That means if there are nine, n should be nine there. Then it ends. Therefore, if you are told to explain, just explain that the computer leads line by line from start to end. Then selection or decision control structures. The selection involves choosing specified group of instructions, stroke statements for execution. In selection control, one or more statements are usually selected from execution depending on whether the condition is true or false. Therefore, to explain in simple terms, just explain that the computer works on a condition of true or false. We call it Boolean. The condition must be Boolean. Boolean means is it is either yes or no. Therefore, the okay in case okay, for example here, uh, we are we want to know whether x is greater or equal to 20. In this case, the condition is true if x is equal to or greater than 20. 
any value that is less than 20 will meet the condition false. Therefore, that is the Boolean statement you are talking about. Then, uh, in the question paper, we have been asked to use a diagram or a flowchart. And therefore, this is not a full flowchart, but an extract of a flowchart showing if-then structure. Remember to watch the other video. Practically, you see how the if-then else works. Therefore, the condition is true here. And if the condition is true, execute statements between then and and if. Else, the condition, uh, the continuation of the program. For example, else executes. Therefore, that is an extract of uh, if then statement. Don't forget to watch that video. It will actually enlighten you and new and open you up to see how this condition practically works. Then we can proceed with our question. Uh, we can go to this question. Draw a program flowchart that would accept three numbers and find their sum. If the sum is greater than 200, it adds 30 to the sum. Otherwise, it subtracts 20 from the sum. The program should then display the results. Therefore, that is uh, 7 marks. And therefore, uh, we shall be using uh, the statement, the selection statement. That is if, then, else. That's what actually the examiner is testing. And therefore, for that case, we shall go and, and uh, launch our Microsoft Word. Then go to layout, make sure our orientation is, uh, is actually portrait. That is a wrong paper. Then we shall draw our flowchart. We just go to shapes. Then we, we draw the start button. That is the start. Then you click this to eradicate that. Then we shall have the, the, the entry. That is the input. Therefore, the input, we usually use the parallelogram, this, this one here, or robust. Then you wish, uh, we want to process. We are processing the three numbers. Therefore, to process the three numbers, you need this. Therefore, this is start. This is parallelogram or robust is used for enter uh, inputs. Then this one is used for processing, and it's called the process. Then from there, we shall have a decision. Therefore, we shall have a decision uh, down there. You can still click that. Then after the decision, we shall have uh, the two conditions for adding 30 and for minusing 20. Remember that. Therefore, if condition is true, uh, we shall actually have uh, a process showing how that one is accomplished. On the other hand, we shall also have another. We shall also have another. Uh, point there that is for if condition is that is if condition is true if condition is false that is uh, what we shall actually be doing then from there we shall have an output that is uh, that is uh, we shall uh, dis display our results therefore we can go to insert shape then we draw uh, our parallelogram that way then we uh, after doing that then our program can terminate a program can stop therefore this one is also used for to start and to stop therefore first of all we have arranged uh, our our flow chart the way it should look like therefore we can draw it as i explain therefore start then you draw the the arrow to start that way then also uh, show that the program is actually uh, dropping or flowing then this one we shall go to that showing that our program is still flowing then from there we shall have uh, our condition if it's false that way if we can have our condition if it's false in on one hand our condition is if it's true and therefore here we can have our condition we can see that our condition there is true our condition on the other side is false that way then from there these conditions of ours, we shall go to, uh, we shall go to this, uh, this to display. Therefore, this one goes down. Then we shall, uh, you have run about a connector. And this one can be somehow. You have run about a connector. Therefore, connector will be used here. And therefore, this one will just go to that point. 
then we shall also have now this one also going to to the connector showing you that they are actually meeting here before they proceed therefore you can just go up again to format make sure they have the same color that way including the connector so the connector can remain the way it is but there is so much uh, trouble for doing whatever I have done then so now drops down then once that one drops down also this one now goes to the end of the program therefore we have drawn the structure of our program and uh, now we can start feeding the program therefore you right click then we have start then on the other hand we have now now to a uh, to capture our three values therefore the question reads draw a flowchart that would accept three numbers therefore you can have x y z x y z therefore those are our values but now we need to key in the word input or enter therefore we are entering the three values then after entering our three values we go to the next find their sum therefore we go and find their sum here therefore we shall just right click then go to add text then write sum sum is addition therefore equals to x plus y plus z plus z that way therefore those are uh, we have done that therefore you can see how the maths are doing we are following the question step by step if the sum is greater now that is a condition that is a decision if then that is a, a decision and therefore if the sum is greater than 200 therefore we go to that point and ask ourselves is the sum now sum has been calculated we have calculated the sum here is the sum therefore our condition is 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 sum is our sum greater uh, that is greater than 200 then you put a question mark therefore we we are actually can just go see no spacing then we can center this therefore we are we are now asking ourselves is is sum greater than 200 therefore i shall have one side saying yes because it is boolean boolean means yes or no on the other side you shall have no therefore just go and take a, a text box therefore and draw therefore we can just say this is yes there is no much undo by doing that on the other hand take another one then draw this one this is no you can also use f and t that is true and false there is no much ado by doing that therefore you can see therefore let's go and answer the question from from the question paper if the if is if it is greater than 200 it adds 30 otherwise that is to say if it's no then it is abstract 20 therefore let's go and do that we just go to the side of no on the side of no you just right click and therefore you have said sum will be sum minus 20 that is if it is false on the other hand we have been told then it will be sum equals to sum plus that or that you see how simple that one is to scoop the seven marks then from there it will display and the the program is the project is complete then it should display therefore it should output sum otherwise it terminates the program says by eh, stop simple as simple as that you have seen how i have drawn that flowchart without struggle without actually uh, much struggle therefore the if you read the question you will see that i have scored seven out of seven from the explanation the way the question is therefore we are drawing a flowchart that would accept three numbers xyz if sum is greater than 200 it adds therefore sum plus 30 otherwise it is sum minus 20 then the program displays the output and that is the whatever you are expected actually to do and therefore uh, let's see okay that is the last part of the programming that is question 16 
and therefore uh, you have seen that it was very easy to answer that therefore thank you very much for watching remember to subscribe if you have not subscribed you can share my videos to other students so that they can also benefit and know how to uh, tackle for charts on the other hand i will see you in the next video that is uh, between 2016 and 2015 question 16 on paper one thank you very much for watching god bless you